previously in the Healing Diary. Holy crap, like, am I depressed? Like, am I de is my life going to derail and then go down like a black hole or something I'm like that? I'm going to head back to head Canada. Back to Canada. Canada. One of the most destructive feelings you can have is the feeling of not enough. We as humans live in a constant inadequacy. The first thought when our alarm goes on is, I didn't sleep enough. The first thought when we are about to present something is, I did not prepare enough. The first thought when we want to open up and be vulnerable with someone is, I am not enough. We worry so much about being a disappointment that deteriorates our confidence and puts a cap on our original potential. I don't want to do nothing, but I also don't feel like I'll be capable of doing anything right now. Translation is a waste of energy. I just don't want this to be like the wrong choice to disappoint everyone. But we all do it. Within the same week of getting my dream offer revoked, I became a disappointment to many people including my family and myself. At the same time, my entire support system went against me. Also at the same time, I went back to a very scary old habit of mine. Emotional eating Emotional eating is a way to suppress or soothe negative emotions such as stress, anger, fear, boredom, sadness, and loneliness. At a time of my life where I was experiencing the bonus bundle of a cluster of emotions including stress, anger, sadness, loneliness, confusion, and fear. Food became a temporary escape to my problems. In the short term, stress can shut down appetite. The nervous system sends messages to the adrenal gland atop the kidneys to pump out the hormone epinephrine, which activates the fight or flight mode, a revved up physiological state that temporarily puts eating on hold. In the long term, however, adrenal glands release another hormone called cortisol, and cortisol increases appetite and may also ramp up motivation in general, including the motivation to eat. Oh, I do realize that like, I do stress eat sometimes whenever I feel really stressed. I try to like just walk to the fridge for, I don't know, not not the most healthy thing. Did I also mention that I'm on my period? I'm not hungry. I don't need to eat this. And I eat it, I feel worse. It's like I'm so full. But then like, I don't even know why I did that. Oh, well, absolutely. It's like, that's when, that's when you know, okay, I'm past my limits. How's yours? It's so good. Nice short bread. We're cutting your tasting for spicy. Good. Okay, so I'm gonna coffee. Coffee is good. This is a major downfall for me, as I thought I left using food as a coping mechanism behind my past in college. But when shit hits the fan, old habits can creep back. I don't know what just happened. I took a jar of peanut butter and a jar of almond butter out of the fridge and somehow I started eating out of both. The only good thing however is that I had another tool to deal with negative emotions and that is my passion for working out. Still, in order to put a stall on my emotional eating, I had to go down to the core of the trigger and getting to the core of the wound always hurts. But for me, addressing it despite the pain is better than just ignoring it and letting it rot me away further. It's funny how the people you love and trust the most can hurt you the deepest. But it's also funny how you can destruct yourself the most because you don't have your armor up against the ones you trust including yourself. You are wholeheartedly yourself toward them and wish they would just accept you as you are. And that part of me died a little and probably will never come back. My connection with my family 
is never going to be the same. My family has been the most supportive for me throughout my whole life until this point. When I accepted that my dream offer was not going to come back, I did not want to give up creating videos. You have exceptional talents, you know, academically, but also uh, you have exceptional talents creatively or you wouldn't be pulled in this direction. You just wouldn't. And people don't understand that you can have two sets of, of uh, talents that are just as strong and just as big, and they both need to be valued as much. Is there a bug over here? Not surprised. It was my dream to be a full-time creator. I have my tripod, my shoes, my clothes in this duffel bag, another purse. But boy, if you didn't get an opportunity to use that, it doesn't, your life doesn't work as well. It feeds you. It really feeds you. And it's an expression that needs to be expressed. Which to my family seemed irrational, stupid, and like a joke. The most hurtful words from the people who I believe loved me the most came repeatedly within 24 hours I lost my offer. Calls, messages, texts. My parents, my grandparents, my extended family in China bombarded me with hurtful words about my content, my channel, myself. You're just lucky. You're not going to make it. You have no potential. You will fail. You will regret this. You will become irrelevant soon. I'm only telling you the harsh truth because I love you. All of this when my channel was starting to sprout at 200k of lovely humans I cherish as a community. These people I call my family or my entire support system. I deeply craved their validation, which in retrospect is not a healthy mindset. Um, be more candid with myself and not just trying to get other people's approval because it just doesn't happen all the time. Yeah, and if, you're, if your sense of being okay is dependent upon somebody else approving it, you're gonna be in big trouble. But because I depended so much on their support, when the rug pull of realizing your closest loved ones never believed in you straight after you lost the offer of your dream, it felt like waking up in a cave with no heaters on a December morning to a bucket full of ice water. I didn't know how to think or feel anymore. Part of me was defiant, angry, furious at how dare these people trash what I value and care about the most. But part of me was worried. What if they're right? What if I'm not cut out to be a creator? This is what I'm working with. I'm like literally inside the bushes and the plants and the poison ivies. What if I already peaked and this is the end of it all? Uh.